computer. Okay, my name is Michael Pucciarelli, and tonight I'll be talking about how I do light painting with LED flashlights and LED lights, and also how I use Adobe Photoshop, the Adobe software system, to process these beautiful images. And I first want to just talk about who I am. I started professional photography in 2010 got an associate degree 2013 and then I joined Professional Photographers America. They have a lot of great learning resources and then in 2017 I joined the Maryland Affiliate Club. In 2020 I joined the Philadelphia Club and I also have an associate degree in digital photography and I've seen a lot of webinars with Photoshop and light painting, and I've met a lot of wonderful artists. So it's tonight's agenda. We're going to talk about light painting information and techniques, talk about camera settings and stuff like that. Then I have two, you know, diagrams of like with the angle with the light aiming at the subjects. And then a good part of the meeting will be on the Adobe software, how I use Bridge, Photoshop. And I'll briefly talk about Lightroom. The two main components are gonna be Bridge and Adobe Photoshop. If you have any questions, just feel free to stop me. These are some sample images where, you know, I start with like a blank, dark file. And then all these images, parts of the photograph are JPEGs exported from Lightroom. And this, and I'll talk about this in Bridge in the Adobe section where I have the master blank file and they have all these exported JPEGs that I pick out the best ones. And then what I do is I copy this from the JPEG and I paste it into the master art file. And I use uh, several blend mode techniques to bring out the full colors and characteristics of the images. And I did, you know, the first two images you just saw, I did a lot of composing. Did a lot of composing with this one. This motorcycle, I decided just to use one image. And I used a bunch of uh, adjustment layers to bring out the parts of the motorcycle. I mean, sometimes big objects are harder to photograph than uh, smaller objects because I'm, I'm standing with the camera with the capabilities and I'm shining the paint. I'm, you know, painting with lead light. And with bigger objects like this, I need to use bigger lights. And in the presentation, I'll talk about that later. Cool. So basically, when I do something small, this is what I like to do. It's like a small stool. This is like a cube I bought from Target. Mm -hmm. Very small setup. And these are like white reflectors. These are great for like, especially when you do like shining objects, you want to use like reflectors. So the glare on the subject won't be so harsh. Right. This is also a reflector. This is great if you want to get a powerful light and go back and forth. And you wanna make sure that the room is really dark to light paint. And if you need to see, the light lights will help you. But just don't shine the lid light at your face, shine it away, because it's powerful light. Mm -hmm. And I'll have diagrams that I'll talk about how to hold the lead flashlight at a 40 degree angle, aiming at the subject. And you wanna paint the subject with the lights going slowly back and forth. And you want to think of the edges and direction of the light. I recommend just using one direction because you'll have impact easier and your image will be easy to understand with one direction. Okay. <clears throat> and again, I'd recommend like a small LED flashlight if you're doing something small between 80 and 120 lumens, that's how you measure the lead power. 
large lumen flashlights, I'd recommend filters, or you could also paint through like a white reflector like right here. And filters I'll talk about later, they're very simple foil pipes you buy from a hardware store and, they're, and you can use duct tape to build it. But these filters are great for attaching on the flashlight to make the light soft. And they work well with any flashlight. It's just a matter of fitting the filter on the flashlight. Mm -hmm. Later on, I'll talk about the diameter of the flashlight and the diameter of the filter. So I'd recommend using filters to soften the light. You can even have a duct tape as a filter to soften the light. Interesting. You know, like, you know, like the white reflector, you can use plastic fusion on scrims. And the same thing with the strobe, you can also use the plastic fusion with the lead light. Yeah. So I prefer to use the white reflector. I'll talk about duct tape later. It's great for attaching the filters. It's also great for creating like a tiny slit snoot. Nice. Then I'll talk about filters and LED flashlights in the next set of slides. These are my LED flashlights. The biggest one is 3,200 lumens. It's a powerful light. You can paint a light car, you can paint, light paint a car with this or a motorcycle. This is more, even a more powerful light. Sometimes I can use this with small stuff, but I have to, I have to put a white screen reflector in front of these lights. Like in the diagram, I had it on the top. This is great. This is a good light if you want to spread light going back and forth and make sure that you have a white reflector. Okay. And these smaller lights are also great. Some of them have 50 lumens, some of them have 20. I'd recommend using foil filters and use this, this plastic pipe from a hardware store. The big LED lights, I recommend using like a white filter, like the other picture. Mm -hmm. And I bought these uh, LED flashlights at Micro Center or Home Depot. Interesting. And you can also buy them online. Now, when you're talking about, oh, okay, never mind. You just answered my question with that next slide. <laughs> you have any? Okay. Yeah, this is a bigger light. This mm -hmm. has 216 lead quality lights. This is a powerful light. This is great for doing like a bike. And you can use the barn doors to make the light more narrow. And these filters, all this comes, you have to buy the battery separate, but okay. it comes in one package. You have to buy the cord separately, but the cord's a good investment. And then you have like a power dimmer, or if the light's too powerful, you can turn it way down. And it's the white balance, the temperature of the light is measured in Kelvins. It's, bal it's, temp it's balanced at 56 K. Yeah, daylight. The white balance for natural light is really 52 K. So it's about the same. Mm -hmm. And when you were talking about, I guess my question was, when you were talking about the filters, um, were you using those just for diffusion or also coloring? I was using just for diffusion. I was just using just to tone down the light. Okay. I know some people use like color when they light paint. I just want to use the regular LED lights. Yeah, and then just do whatever you need to in Photoshop or whatever. Yeah, and I have, you can use these to make color, but I like to use this top one over here as like a, for a softening the light. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a bigger light. This all came in one package. And the light balance is, that's 56K, which is almost the natural light. And it's composed of 600 small LED lamps. I always use. Wow. Yeah, it's a power. This is a powerful light. And this is why you got to use the white socket snoot to soften the light. Mm -hmm. And it also has a power dimmer to lower it. And this is the cords. You can also use your car battery too. 
I always use the three prong plug. I know there's a V-mount battery, but some of those batteries are more expensive than this light. Hmm. Maybe you could buy a $150 battery, but I just, when I go to a studio, I usually do a lot of stuff here, but I did go to a union studio a few times where I brought all my stuff and I used electricity, but I have my cord. This is a good light. If you want to light paint like a motorcycle or something big. Right. And this is called a fusion sock where you can reduce the stop of the light three fourths of a stop and make the light a lot less harsh. And plus you mm -hmm. can, you know, you could use the power dimmer, you could put it at a lower setting. These are called, you know, foil filters where you just go to the hardware, so the pipe section, this is duct tape. And I got a hacksaw to cut it at a um, slant. And all you have to do, you measure the diameter of the flashlight. You go to Home Depot, this mm -hmm. is the same diameter, you put it on a filter. I make a lot of my own tools too, but I also buy stuff from BH and Amazon too. Right. And all these filters, they help control the light. You want to swing in perpendicular motion. And when you light pan outside, like a car, that's tricky because it's dark out. And it's a lot darker outside than inside. You use that other light, you want to use something like this or something like this. Right. And you can also use that other powerful LED flashlight. Mm -hmm. And I recommend using, when you light pan outside, you definitely want to experiment with or without these filters. Like, if you do an interior section of the car, then you want to use like a, a white scrim reflector. So when you light paint something outside, what are you trying to light paint? Car, you want to get rid of the glare? Do you want to not get rid of the glare? And then I'll stress something again many times is the more you control your lighting, Masking in Photoshop will be a much easier, and it's always easier to work with an, a regular exposed file than an overexposed file. Right. Yeah, because you lose data. Yeah, and it's hard to work with. So that's why when I light paints, and I'm gonna talk about that next, I always put these filters on, and I try many lights, but it doesn't mean I'm going to use every image that I light paint, but I'm going to pick out the best ones. And again, you want to swing back and forth in pendulum motion. And there's all types of stuff you can light paint. If you want more texture, go slowly. If you want less texture, go quickly. And then you can always light paint, have a scrim in front of the LED light so you take out glares. And again, think of the direction of light. You want to light from one direction, add more impact easier. You want to think of the edges of what you're trying to light paint. And then before you begin light painting, you want to try to have your camera batteries full. You want to make sure all your LED flashlights and lights work. Have a fresh set of batteries. You want to have extra set of batteries for the camera and LED lights. I'd recommend using a cable release, either wired or remote, to hold the camera still. Mm -hmm. Because if you push the button, you can use the camera. Yeah. And then whenever, whenever when I do waterfalls or other stuff, I always use the wired cable release. And you should use a tripod to a sturdy tripod. Mm -hmm. These are with the LED lights, but with the filters on, so less harsh the light is. Oh yeah, that's really interesting. Yeah, thanks. And then you can put like duct tape to make us less harsh. The lights will look differently and you'll think in light paint differently. And Photoshop will be easier with masking and compositing. And then you wanna definitely over avoid any overexposed images when doing work in Photoshop. And if you control the light with the filters, your job's easier and better.
And these with the lights with no filters. More control. Yeah, there's definitely a different a difference. Yeah, it's different. That's why if you want to use this top light, you want to have like a white scrim and you light paint underneath so it won't be so harsh. Mm -hmm. And then Photoshop masking will be easier because you're working with a regular image, not a truly overexposed image. It's probably better to use the filters than not to. It all depends on what you're trying to do with the light paint, with the photograph. Right. Now you mentioned you stack the images, correct? What I do is, uh, that's what I'll talk about in the demo, where, where basically I have a master file, I have some raw files, and they go to Lightroom, and that's going to be in the demo. Mm -hmm. yeah. and this is a great setup for indoor light painting. Aperture 16, and I would use ISO 100 because you're inside. And it, a little LED flashlight can be very powerful with a lot of light. And I'd recommend using bulb setting. I recommend using standard for the sharpest picture. And this is natural daylight white balance. And I always like to use that because that's closest to the temperature of the LED light. Mm -hmm. Then you use evaluative for the meeting row because it's good from good contrast. And you have the autofocus. It's great for photographing still life and nature. And you have, I always like to use the drive mode as a single shooting because you're taking one shot at a time. Yeah. I wouldn't use H plus plus because you take too many shots and some of the shots will be way underexposed. Yeah, there's no point of it. Yeah, just one shot at a time. And this is what I mean by a 45 degree angle, is you have something here, your subject, if you're gonna light paint on top, that's why you have a scrim here, a white reflector. And to make the light less harsh, you can even have a reflector here, right in front of it. And this is a barn, this is a LED flashlight, it's a small LED flashlight. I'm using a foil filter. And I mean by pendulum back and forth. And you're at a 40 degree angle. This is with a bigger light, 40 degree angle. And you make this light smaller by closing the barn doors so that YN216, and you can light paint with the scrim to make it less harsh for you to take out the glares. And again, 45 degree angle, and it's pendulum motion back and forth. Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to talk about how I do. Adobe Camera Raw. I'm going to first go to Bridge. I haven't used Bridge in a long time. Yeah, I know some people a lot of use Lightroom, but I like Lightroom is great depending on what you're trying to do. And let's go this one. Lightroom seems to be good for like more bulk type stuff, like weddings and you know, when I do weddings and things like that. Yeah, I'd recommend Lightroom if you're doing like 3,000 images or something. Exactly. <laughs> I don't feel like doing weddings because I don't feel like taking that many photographs. Yeah. These are all what they do with the flashlight. See, I, I light paint this. That's cool. A selection. Mm -hmm. I make a selection. I make a selection. And I put them over here. I pick out the best ones. Sure. So your camera's stationary mounted on a tripod, right? Right. And it does, and that the, you don't change angles for any of these shots. No. no. Gotcha. Camera still. Get a weight bag if you have to. 
Yeah. And this is where the master file comes in where these are all exported from Lightroom. I just sync all the properties. I don't do anything fancy in Lightroom. This is the master art file. Then I'm gonna go to Adobe Photoshop. And first, I'm gonna open up that file. I'm gonna go to my folder. Observation, okay, Let's see, I'm gonna go to there. Okay, Photoshop tends to close out sometimes. It's a powerful software. Yeah, I've run into that problem. Okay, this is the this is the master file where I'm going to bring up the layers. I'm also going to make this smaller. The only thing I'm seeing right now is the M. Okay, what I'm going to do, thanks for letting me know. Okay, I got it. I'm going to do, I think the problem is got kicked out. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to share my screen. I'm going to go to Photoshop. You see my screen now, right? You see my screen, correct? Yes, I am. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I was on mute. I didn't realize it. Yeah, it happens. Glad we have the Zoom technology. And these are all, yeah, I'm gonna, these are all separate layers. Mm -hmm. That's a blank exposure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up, I'm just gonna open up I'm just gonna open up a few JPEGs. Gotta go to my folder. So what I did was, these are all JPEGs exported from Lightroom from raw files. So I'm going to do is I'm going to make this selection. And a lot of times I like to use object selection. And then if I need to make the selection better, I go to quick selection, I have the selection. I'm going to use the alt key to make this a little better. I'm going to use a shift key to bring it out. Trying to get a good selection. I'm going to copy this. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this in the space.
I'm going to come over here. I'm going to make this a very dark file. I'm going to turn this into a layer mask. I'm going to put okay. the alt or option key. I don't know if you use Apple or Windows. I'm going to say both. Yeah, um, yeah, I do both. Okay, I'm going to push the alt key. Then I'm going to push the X because I want to issue the opposite. Then I'm going to get my paintbrush, a normal, and it's a soft brush. And then I'm going to change the color to gray. But the mode, but I'm going to start with the screen mode. Hmm. <clears throat> so I'm going to also do this is I'm going to make this then. So I'm changing the screen green mode color gray. I'm going to bring this out. That's the first coat of paint. Then I'm going to change the color to whites. But I'm going to use not the same screen blend node. I'm going to use soft light. Make our brush a little bigger. I'm going to do another one. I'm going to do the crackers. I'm going to make sure that I want to push Control D to take out the selection. And then do the object selection. I like that selection, so I'm going to do Control C or Command C. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to make this a little bigger, brighter, so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do, and I'm going to get bigger. Sometimes I do control T. Sometimes I like to use the warp, but a lot of times I just drag it. And sometimes you can use the warp to make it fit better. Okay. Then I'm going to turn this in to layer mask by pushing the alt or the option key. Then I'm going to change the color to gray. And I'm going to use the brush. But I'm going to make sure I start in the screen blend mode. Then I'm just going to let paint. It's like the primer paints. Right. Then I'm going to change the color to white. But the thing about this next color. Sometimes I do this. I want to make it nice and pretty. This, I could use several blend nodes on this. Mm -hmm. You want to get it to what you want. You want to bring out your products. So the second coat of paint, I'm still at white, but I can use more than one blend mode, but I won't use screen. And that's what I do. It just, Photoshop is powerful. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very complicated. It's complicated, but it takes work. Like I said, I paint with gray screen blend mode. And then the second coat is white with soft blend mode or overlay or a combination, but it's not screen. Again, okay. with gray, but screen blend mode. And then the second is white I paint, but like a more dramatic blend mode, but not screen. Nice. And I do that for all the images. And then I have actions like I have actions for the speckle. I have actions for dust and scratches. I have actions for sharpen. And then I want to enter the competition. It's IPC, but then now since the width is bigger, mm -hmm. So what I do here is when I go noise, speckle, but then less and scratches. A lot, a lot of times I don't use, of course, 24. I was playing around. I use three. Okay. Sorry about that. Then I like the sharp. I like to use the unsharp mask, I like to leave it around 200 to make sure that there's no halos and it's too sharp or jagged edges. I like to use a threshold for seven that has good contrast. I like to affect one pixel. And I can use other stuff like, I suppose I wanted to take specs out. I do shift F5 and I can, you know, I can. Do content aware, I can put a pattern in, I can put a color in. And I have a lot of actions that I made. Mm -hmm. I save changes. So I'm gonna go back to Adobe Bridge. Then I'm going to talk about another image that I like to do. Let's see. Uh, and basically, these are all these raw files or individual parts I light paint with the lead lights. I pick out the best ones. I use many LED flashlights. I put it over here. And then I go to Lightroom. I just sync all the properties. I go over here. I put the JPEGs in here, but then I move the JPEGs. I put the JPEGs in with the master file. And this is... <coughs> Think about Photoshop. Sometimes I save images from other programs in here. And it happens a lot. And this is the master file. Okay. So then I'm going to do, I'm going to go into Adobe Photoshop. I'm going to open up that file. Go to my light painting folder. Oh, this is the master file. I'm going to first open up the master file. I'm going to make this smaller so I can work with it better. And then just going to open up a few JPEGs. Are these 
And sometimes, you know, you have to use just a regular adjustment layer to bring the thing, the character you want out of the objects. This is the base file, but I'm going to turn this, make it as dark. So then, see what you could do with this, what I sometimes do with JPEGs, if something's really complicated, I may make a selection, then I make another selection. So maybe I can get 10 selections from just one JPEG if the lighting looks good. Like, for huh. I'm gonna I'm gonna select out this face. I'm gonna try to make this a better selection by I'm gonna copy the server. I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it. I'm going to try to drag this in place or stretch it in place. I'm going to make sure it's in place, but now I'm going to turn this into a layer mask. Where this is the opposite of this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the color to gray. I'm going to use a light paintbrush. I'm going to start, use the color gray to paint with the blend mode of screen. Right. Make our brush a little bigger. We try as much as we can do. Then I'm going to change the color to white. But I'm going to use, I always like to use soft light. Sure. And you want to just paint in the rest of the characteristics and maybe then switch a blend mode to overlay. I'll do another one. And like I said, I could use maybe as many selections. From this one JPEG. Stretching in place. And I turn this into a layer mask by pushing the alter option key. And I, and I click this circle thing. And white, but then I change it to black, gray. Or I change the screen blend, the blend mode of screen. Then it's the first coat of paint, and then I change it to white. I change it to soft light. So I want to make it nice and soft. 
And that's what I do. So I'm going to search so already did this image. So basically, summarize is mm -hmm. this image. I start with gray. Uh, change the screen mode, blend mode screen, paints, first coat, second coat, whites, if you're on screen, then I do soft light, I do more painting. And again, I have actions as we talked about. Um, Again, I could have an action for the speckle, I have an action for dust and scratches, I have an action for sharpen. There are other actions too. Suppose I wanted to take suppose there were dust in there. Mm -hmm. I can do I can do the Gaussian blur. I can do content aware. I have all these actions and there's other actions you can get too. I'm going to go over one more image. Mm -hmm. You share, I'm going to do bridge. Basically, go back to my light painting. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'll choose a different one. I'm going to choose, let's see. This one I'll do, basically. These are all my raw files. I pick up the best ones. I do control five. Then I put them in here. And I put, these are all, we'll go in the Lightroom. So it goes in the folder here. And I move the JPEGs in the master art file. These are all the JPEGs moved from that folder from Lightroom here. And then that's the master art file. I'm going to go to Photoshop. I'm going to open up. I'm going to go to my light painting. Here's a light painting. I'm going to make the screen smaller. Let's see. Basically, these are, I'm going to just open up. I'll just open up two. Let's see. What I try to do, I'm going to try to find a really nice, attractive light painted image from the flashlight. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make a selection. Whoops, wrong thing. Control D. I'm going to do Control C to copy or Command C. I'm going to shut everything down. So now, Over here, I'm going to drag this into place. I'm going to go control T.
I'm going to try to stretch it into place. I think we need to go control T again just to. This is where. But now I'm going to turn this into a layer mask. I'm going to push the other option key in this thing down here. And I'm going to change the color to gray. I'm going to use a paintbrush. The first coat of paint. Then I'm going to change the color to white. I'm going to change the color, the blend mode. I'm going to, right. I'll probably use, oh, you have questions or? No, no, no. It's just, um, Troy, I was just, as you were going down, it's was like, ah, oh, soft light, right? Yeah, soft light. I'm going to probably use soft light and overlay. I'm going to always like to start with soft light. And then I'm going to also just use overlay. And I like that. So now, and that's what I do. I just, I start with gray and then I, Use screen mode to start. Right. And change the color of the whites. <clears throat> I like to use soft light or overlay. And that's what I do. And there's actions. We talked about the actions. Yep. Then when I export it, I just like that. I know some people can use, I like to use JPEG, um, I like to convert the sRGB. I know some people can convert the pro photo of that stuff, but I may eventually do that, so. I can save changes. Uh, if you have any questions, just let me know. It was a pretty cool process. Yeah. I, I really kind of dig it. Running. I've seen a lot of videos. The webinars really help. The online site courses help. So, you want to, Ross Harold teaches something. I mean, if you're, I paid, you know, $40 for that course in Pennsylvania. That was a pretty best course I took in light painting. And I also seen a lot of webinars mm -hmm. with John Harp and other light painting. Right. This is my still life photography group. It's growing every day. Our other groups are growing. My business links. Cool. If you have any questions, just feel free to email me at mpucciarelliart2016 at gmail.com. Sounds good. Yeah. Glad you liked the presentation. Yeah, man. That was, that was cool. What, um, what resolution are you generally doing all these kind of pieces for? Resolution or medium or? Well, what's like, like, well, how big are these images uh, potentially? What's your, what, the oh, one the you resolution. were doing was a, was a uh, comp competition print, which is what, 16 by 20? Well, IPC, what we try to do, let me go to an image and see. Let me say, uh, where the heck is it? What I like to do is IPC, image size, where the resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Now, if you enter an IPC, you'll want to have 4,000 max as the longest side. Okay. And there's also, you know, <clears throat> since if I do actions, I have an action that does that. It takes care of it for you. First, you put the borders on. And then since the width is bigger, that means this should be 400. So if we go up here, it should be 400. I just, there's an action that does this all automatically. Right. And it just, you know, I'm part of PPA.com, Professional Photographers America. Yeah. That's how I learned this. I watch videos, I take notes, <clears throat> just teach yourself. Just take a lot of notes. 
Pretty cool. Yeah. Excellent. All right, man. Well, thanks. You're welcome. I'll stop for sure. And I'll end the presentation. Thank you for watching. Yeah, man. I'm glad I, I'm glad I saw this on Facebook. Oh, good. Glad you came. Yeah. Well, and All right, well, yeah.